Okay. Okay. Hello, good evening, uh, and welcome to this edition of uh, Way Forward Nigeria. My name is Fatia Yogunibido, and then as we all know, this Saturday, Nigeria goes back to the poll, trying to search for another leadership for the next four years. Somebody who is going to hold the baton for our political leadership. And uh, for several weeks now, we have witnessed campaigns, uh, political cross carpeting, and so many events that actually associate with the political uh, project and political seasons. Uh, one important thing that actually has been agitating is the issue of security as we approach the election day. And recently we witnessed lots and lots of things going on in Nigeria, which actually has sent jitters to so many parts of the country, as well as uh, political analysts looking forward into what might be happening during the election and in the aftermath. Today, we are not going to engage in any political campaign or any political sort of uh, canvassing. All we just want to do today is to be able to look forward uh, towards the election day as well as after the uh, aftermath of the election, what might be the condition that Nigeria is going to be in. We understand the situation. We know what has been transpassing between parties to parties and person to person and then politics of slaves, of hatred, of blackmail. And uh, I have to confess to you that for a, very prod for a very long period of time, apart from the bitterness aspect of this political season, it has been the most interesting political play in Nigeria. And if it had been for a positive reason, honestly, I could have said yes, I'm very proud to be a Nigerian, most especially with the way Nigeria politics has taken, you know, uh, shape with a uh, bitterness transcending with uh, lots of views coming and for the first time in history mass engagement in Nigerian political you know uh, sort of uh, events it's quite we should give ourselves kudos at least even though with little fracas here and there uh, where we, are, we can see boast and say that we are moving on in Nigeria politically and our democracy is actually transcending and is maturing. Thank you Nigerians for making this to happen. We appreciate you from uh, Heritage Television where I'm um, actually speaking at the moment. We know that by God's grace everything is going to be okay and uh, let us just keep as usual to pray for our nation. We all love Nigeria. We appreciate our political leaders. They hold our passion for the nation. Likewise with the people of the, of the nation, either back home or in the in, in diaspora. We represent a positive Nigeria. We represent a positive future. And uh, we are trying to just make sure that everything goes well as we approach the election come this Saturday, February 16, 2019. Welcome once again. I'm speaking from uh, Editing Television from the Art of London. Uh, we are the new kid on the block and we are trying to just to uh, make sure that uh, from London we engage the world and we try as much as possible to allow the world to understand that what we are doing here is to make sure that Nigeria moves forward and Nigeria achieves a better political transition. So um, good evening once again and I welcome you for being part of this program. Please, when the time comes, the line is going to be opened. You are a security man. You are a concerned Nigerian. Phone us and let us have your views. Let's have your suggestions as we approach the election. What is the best way forward in Nigeria? What can we do to make sure that there is no violence in Nigeria? What advice have you got for all our political leaders? What can you tell Nigerians who are going to vote? And let me remind you as a Nigerian that is concerned. The blood of Nigerian citizen is not worth spilling for a Nigerian politician. We can only do our own part to make sure that the political transition goes very well. 
but not at the expense of any individual individual blood. And notice that I know that as we are going to the polls, please, your life matters to your family, to yourself, and to the nation at large. Please, voting with security. Make that your underlined point as we approach the election date and as you approach the election poll on Saturday. Today, as I spoke earlier on, we are not here to either pacify any political party or to say one party is good, the other party is bad. All we are here to do is to project as to the security aspect of Nigeria. What are we going to have in the aftermath of the election on Saturday? Where are we going to be by this time of next week? Please, you have a part to play. And make sure that you play that part and let us let peace reign in Nigeria. Thank you very much for, for being part of this program. Today, I'm engaging a very gentle man, uh, a man that actually God has given the vision to see a lot of things in the past about Nigeria, a man that actually made a very big impact in the, in 19, in the uh, 2015 election as it went. And um, let me remind you what really happened as regarding this man. Since, night, since uh, 2011, God has been opening his spiritual eyes to give advice to Asurok. The same thing was repeated in 2013, and all the messages were actually put on YouTube and sent to Asurok, which I believe that uh, many sources in Asurok digested. The, the, the vision then was that the then president must actually approach politics with caution as there were dangers that were inherent during that period of time. And it played out the way his prediction came. And today, once again, he's here with us to give us his own insight as what might be happening in this election and in the aftermath. I'm having with me here a man of God, Prophet Austin Moses, the convener, leader, pastor of Manasseh Christian Center, the Restoration House here in London. Mr. I mean, pastor Moses, you are welcome to the program. God bless you, sir. I appreciate your time. Out of no time, at last you created time for us. May God continue to empower you, sir. Amen. I really you. appreciate your time. And uh, let me remind our readers that this is just a flip program because I tried to engage him last week. He traveled because so he's always a man that goes across the world. And he said, if you can fix me for Monday, definitely I'll be there. He was supposed to have arrived back on Wednesday, but he said because of the program, he will come back and here he is with us today. So you're welcome, sir. Uh, please, well, can you take us back to what happened, the, the vision you had far back to 2011 and 13 which was repeated as well in 2014, which you sent to Asurok regarding the then president as to the path God wanted them to take in the election. Well, before I go into that, uh, <laughs> please permit me to just introduce myself properly. <laughs> just for the benefit of those who might be watching me for the very first time, or maybe you come across my face uh, for the very first time. Uh, like you mentioned by the grace of God, I am Prophet Austin Moses. And uh, I'm the senior pastor of Manasseh Christian Center Restoration House, based in London, United Kingdom. And by the grace of God, I'm also the founder of Prophet Austin Moses Ministries, Voice of Prophecy. And that is my outreach ministry. <laughs> by the grace of God, again, I have been operating in the office of the Prophet of God since 1988. How many years now? 31 years. So when I speak, I know exactly what I am talking about. If God say, speak, I will speak. If God doesn't say speak, if it's my opinion, my idea, my perception, I will let the people know that this is not God speaking, this is me speaking. Now that will take me to um, the prophecy that God gave me. Uh, the first one was actually in 2012. Actually, 2012. The Lord gave me a message for the then president, uh, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, of which I released the message on YouTube. 
and I also went on television in the, in the UK and I spoke about the, the message. And after I did that, I remember vividly that um, there was someone, I won't mention the name, who was uh, then working in the office of the president then. The person uh, happens to be one of my friends on Facebook. He called me and then he had a very hard argument with me because of the message. I, I, my, as a prophet of God, my responsibility is to speak the mind of God, regardless of who will like me or who will not like me. And I remember after that, he told me something. He said, try me next time, whenever God gave you, give you a message for the, for the president, try, try me. Give the message to me. I will make sure that I pass the message on to him. It's one thing for God to give you a message. You see, there are some messages that God will give you. It's private. There are some that you have to say in the open so that many people will listen to it, hear about it, so that when it happens, they will say, oh, we remember that God actually spoke about it. Now, in 2013, I remember vividly, it was in September, the Lord gave me a message, also for the then president. And before I do that, God had been giving messages to uh, leaders in Nigeria, even right from the time of Ulusha Gopasa John, when he was on seat. I remember that the Lord gave me a message, I think that was 2003 or something, God gave me a message for him. And uh, I wrote the message, I sent the message to him through VHL, and I traced the message, I tracked the, 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 the parcel, and uh, it was signed for by someone in the Arso Rock. And I will stand to believe that he received the message, because not long after that, he acted from the content of the message, which makes me to believe that he actually received the message. Now, so the, the president, the then president of Nigeria, good luck, Ebele Jonathan, 2015, the Lord gave me a message for him that he must not try to run for the office of the president of Nigeria for the second term. That he actually, God actually brought him there for a purpose. His term was to be for one term. Now, let me go deeper on this. You see, our God is a God of purpose. I'm not a politician, so I will speak more on the spiritual side of things because as a prophet of God and from the deep revelation that I've received from God over the years concerning the nation of Nigeria. Now, God is a God of purpose. And God will not do a thing without a purpose. Now, he said to Jeremiah, before I form you, Rasmus, I ordain you, I know you a prophet to nation. God has a divine mandate for every single one of us on this earth. And God also has a divine mandate for every country, every nation of this earth. God has a divine mandate for each country on this earth. But it is very sad that in most countries, the people who are actually in power, they are not the divine mandate of God for this country. Let me put that aside. Now, when the Lord gave me the message, I released the message. This is what the Lord said. His term was to be for one. And the reason why God brought him into power was to prepare the one that God wanted to use to bring into fulfillment his plan and agenda for Nigeria. That, you see, God will not take you to a place miraculously without a purpose. If you look at this life, the way that he got there, it was the hand of God, the finger of God. And for those of you watching us, if God have miraculously elevated you to a position that you least expected, please ask God what is the reason why you promoted him to that seat. But he didn't, but he wasn't aware of it. I'm sure about that. He wasn't aware of it. And um, Imagine, in the midst of mega voices, in quote, in the city, now I'm speaking parable, now imagine a tiny voice in the wilderness, in the midst of mega voices in the city, because remember then, there were many great men of God who told him that God said you should go, you will win. Now, I, for me, not many, not many people know me, but I, God knows me. Now my voice now coming saying God said you shouldn't go. Of course, they will just, who is this? But let me tell you this, Nathan, the prophet in the Bible, was not known to many people. But yet, God spoke through him, or through him, to David. 
So I spoke, I released the message, he didn't listen. He went and contested, contested, spent billions. At the end, what happened? Something that has never happened before. For a sitting president to be toppled in Nigeria, it actually happened. Because when God speaks, God always breaks into power. Now listen to this. I remember some years ago, I went to visit a friend of mine. I talked to Nigeria. I went to his office. He wasn't there. I was waiting for him when he came in. As he ushered me into his office, a phone call came through for him. I said he's uh, the, um, the leader of the APC. That he just came to the office now that he wants to see you. He said, Prophet Moses, what do I do now? Do you wait? I said, no, let's go together. I went with him. I met the leader of the APC the first time. He introduced me to him. We met. While we were sitting there, the Lord said to me then that, Prophet, APC will win the election. There and then, I, I turned to my friend and said, this election, APC will win. He's, he's still alive. He's still in government today. I won't mention it, but he's still, in, he's, in, he's still in government today. That's how APC came into power. Now listen to this. I have, I, there are some pastor friends of mine. When I release a video after this president, president was sworn in, that God himself put him there for a purpose. I remember there was a pastor friend of mine who contacted me and said, how can, how can God put a Muslim in the position of power? Listen, viewers. God is the creator of the universe. God can use anyone, anyone, to fulfill a purpose, either on an individual life or in a nation. If God can speak through a donkey, God can use anyone. But that does not mean that if the person that when the person die, the person will go to heaven. But God can use anyone. God brought him there for a purpose. And I told him, and all those videos there on YouTube, I remember I told him that God brought you there for a purpose and your term is for one term. And whatever you know you want to do, start to do it because you don't have enough time. You don't have much time. Put this in place. Put it in place. I released a video not long after he was being sworn in. Because God knew exactly what his plans are. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. And God said to me, he said, I want President Goodluck Ibilijatan to see the error that he made. That's why I brought Buhari in. Buhari came in as a result of the spiritual error that Jonathan made. Now he's there. People are shouting, screaming, this and that. But God has said that his term is won. But sir, if I, before you move on, if yes. I may uh, actually analyze uh, uh, the dream, as you said, yes. cast your mind back to prior to the, to the last election yes. and what actually transpired during that period of time. Yes. And you remember that um, the tension was so high yes. in the camp of the opposition. Yes. And uh, if you remember, there was this uh, several messages that was coming and uh, the several international visits by the then uh, opposition party, the, the current okay. uh, APC in government. And uh, if I can still remember, remind you what happened during that period of time, that uh, even the then opposition threatened yes. that if by any virtue of uh, natural occurrence or that is in, in, by, by virtue of him winning the election yes. or even coming into to rigging that as long as he, he wants a second term that the APC might be going to create a parallel government outside of the government which could have actually been a recipe for confrontation or, or, or say another civil war. Don't you think God was using for that purpose of trying to tell Jonathan to push aside because certain desperation is coming that might be making his hand to be soiled? Let me, share, let me say this. I remember vividly that in that video that I released in 2013, the Lord said to him that he must not allow people to put pressure on him that will create unrest in the country. It's not that For the same reason. For that same reason. Of He's not that, creating problem for yes. the nation. Listen to this. Okay. Now, from what you just told me now, 
their license is just made now. Do you think that God will choose a man? And another man will say, if that man should win, that I will do this on that, and God will be looking. God will not descend so low. He will not come to the level of a man. God is not afraid of anybody. He can take anyone out at any time. But we are talking about people, politicians, who never actually go, you know, spiritual, take God's words as so serious. But they are, many are so desperate because they want to attain power at all costs. Yeah. Listen to this. <laughs> I'm just sir. You are taking me to another route. <laughs> you that, that, that I don't want to go. What I will go do, okay, for sir. the benefit of those who are watching us. Listen to this. Recently, I released a video. For me, I'm used to criticism. And in fact, the ministry of the prophet, the seat of the prophet that God put me, has created more enemy for me than friends. It's a lonely journey for me. Sometimes I ask God, why is it that you always give me confrontational messages. You don't give a message that will uh, uh, bring friends to me, but rather you bring, you, you give me messages that will create enemies. You say, you are my mouthpiece. So whatever I say to you is exactly what you say. It's not about who like you or who doesn't like you. Just a few weeks ago, I released a message on my, I did a live broadcast on my Facebook page. The state, no, the state uh, the, the, the state of the mind of God concerning Nigerian churches. And he said to me, the greatest sin that the Nigerian churches have committed is the sin of mammon. The love of money. The love of money. Many great men and women of God in Nigeria, they have traded the message that God gave them for money. Many are looking for position. Many are looking for favor. In so doing, they have pocketed the great message that God gave to them. You say most of those politicians, they don't believe in God or they don't, they don't listen to them. Many. Many of them. But the, the thing is that most of those politicians we have in Nigeria, is either, majority of them is either you're a Muslim or you're a Christian. So if you are a Christian, who is your pastor? Who pray for you? Listen to this. If you are a politician, you are the head of, of the country, maybe the president, prime minister, whatever it is, and you have five pastors who you believe in the anointing, who you listen to, who pray for you, and you go to one, the person tell, tell the truth. You get angry, you go to the second one. That's the person tell the truth. If the five of them tell you the same truth, you are a human being. At the point you will see that and reflect. But what happened? Those that are supposed to tell the truth, you can hate me for this, it's okay, I'm used to it. Those that are supposed to tell the truth, they are not telling the truth. Why? Because of connection. God is not interested in your connection. God is not interested in who you know. Have you ever seen a man of God that died? After he died, God opened the door of heaven because you have mega church? No. No. It's not about what you, it's not about the material wealth that you are gathering. No, you will die and leave them one day. But listen to this: God trusted you so much, He made you His mouthpiece. You that is watching me now, search your heart. Has there been any time that you swallow the world that God gave you? The message that's supposed to have delivered a nation that God gave you. Has there been any time that you swallowed it? Because of who will not like you, because of who will be your friends, because they might withdraw your contract. Hey, 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 hey. It is better for you to stand for God and speak the truth. Stand for God and speak the truth. If the leaders in Nigeria, the religious leaders, most of them, if they should begin to stand up for the truth. I watch the news. I read news on social media. I watch YouTube. I see many voices speaking. God is saying, God is saying. At the point, if Kato Seki, you become confused. Listen, my dear. If it is your opinion, let the people know that this is your opinion. If it is the voice of God, let them know that it is the voice of God. Many are prophesying based on sentiment. Many are prophesying based on emotion. 
Many are prophesying based on sight. Few days, you know, January, last month, the Lord spoke to me and said, Son, do you know that a man can be very good at doing a particular thing? And yet, he might not be the one that I would choose for, for it. I can be very good at doing a thing, but maybe yet I'm not the one that God would choose for it. He took me into the Bible when God sent Samuel to the house of Jesse to anoint a king. He entered the house. The firstborn came, Eliab. He looked healthy. In the mind, in the eyes of Samuel, he fit to be a king. But in the eyes of God, he wasn't the one. He wasn't the one. Most of the leaders that we have in Africa, not only in Nigeria, people put them there either by sight, by favoritism, nepotism, tribalism, religious sentiment, or by emotion. If we can seek the face of God and ask God, what is your mandate? What are you saying? Listen, do you want to tell him that in the midst of all this chaos going on in Nigeria, God is not speaking? He got sleeping. God is not sleeping. The Bible says he does not sleep nor slumber. His eye sees everything. But those that are supposed to speak, they are not speaking. And even when they speak, they don't speak the truth. Many have been to Asherah with great message. When after, and this, but they are very smart. Imagine God gave you a message to give to a leader. Get him there. Of course, they will put you in the reception area. Give you a cup of tea. You are there with a message from the Most High God. You drank that cup of tea. They served the delicacy. You ate the whole thing. You have not delivered the message. They gave you a big fat envelope. You collected the money. You have not delivered the message. How can you look at the face of the leader and say, Dust the Lord, you are a wicked man. Where you have ate his food? You can't do that. And that's what we have in Africa today. People are praying to God, telling God to deliver Nigeria. God has delivered Nigeria many years ago. Nigerians, you have the destiny of Nigeria in your hands. Some of you watching me now, you know the truth. But are you walking by the truth, with the truth for the truth? No. Many are running for their stomach. Many are running for what will benefit them, not the mandate of God. You took me to that route. <laughs> Pastor, thank you very much. Um, the program is uh, Way Forward Nigeria. My name is Fatah Yokuribido. And uh, we are here just uh, to analyze and uh, to give you, you know, a sort of uh, insight as to what might be happening this uh, Saturday. And the most important message today is, please, as the election day approaches, your life matters. Yeah. Please, your blood is not worth being spilled for politicians in Nigeria. Know that your family cherishes you. The nation, you have a lot to offer the nation as an individual. And please, whatever you can do to keep your life safe this Saturday, please do. Uh, thank you very much for being part of this program. I've been engaging with uh, Pastor Austin Moses of the Manasseh House. Uh, well, you you've, mentioned, you've mentioned about uh, pastors and the Muslim religious leaders being part of the conspiracy to install uh, leaders that are not actually called by God. But how... At times when God speaks, He speaks proverbially. Okay. Now, how, can, how do we arrive at a judgment? Because as spiritually, we know that judgment belongs to God. Whatever anybody is doing, definitely, at the end of the day, we are going to account for it. Yes. But can we actually apportion blame? Or can we say several things that people, I mean, can, are we in a position to be able to say that a pastor that goes to Asso Rock or that goes to pray for a politician, actually is doing wrong and how do we arrive at a judgment that many of them are doing bad things yeah. so please i, I don't want us to know because at times when god communicates you know he communicates spiritually and wants you to digest whatever he is communicating you know i understand most of you journalists <laughs> you know your way of you know try to put rope on somebody's neck not really but listen <laughs> to this i never say that praying for politician is a wrongdoing. Okay. I never say that. I do pray for them too. <laughs> I do pray for them too. Funny enough, that was one of them I prayed for on the street of 
Osford Circus here in London. On the street, I heard his hand and pray. He went back, bam, things happened. But to the glory of God, I have not been boastful. I have never collected a dime from any one of them or go to them for any assistance. Which is why you have the confidence to, to, to talk anyway. Yes, now, wait. Listen to this. Those politicians, they know the true pastors. When they want to listen to the truth, they know where to go. They know the ones who are there for money. I'm not saying it's not good. Of course, the Bible says we should pray for our leaders. We must pray for our leaders. In fact, we owe it as a duty, as a responsibility, as a mandate, as a task, as an assignment from God to pray for our leaders. But that does not mean that we should not tell them the truth. We must tell them the truth. Most of those politicians, they are thinking many Nigerians for a fool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And like most Nigerians, they keep allowing history to repeat itself. I'm not a politician. I thought I would come here and just speak only on the prophets <laughs> this side of it. But we can't do without touching Because on, uh... what I try to do is that I always try to separate my office as a prophet of God from from what my eyes see or what my ears hear. So that when the Lord is not speaking, I will not be taking my emotion for the voice of God. I always try to put a very big dichotomy between the two. But as it is now, I have to speak because you put me through that line. Yes. Now, you've seen some politicians that came to you. They gave you money. How much? 5,000, a bag of rice? They promised you heaven and earth. And getting there, they've forgotten about you. Their children are outside of the country, school in the best school. You cannot afford to send your child to a school, right? And then you keep allowing that to happen. When election is coming, they take you for a fool. They come to you, you collect it. Listen, election is coming. I won't tell you not to collect it if you want. You can collect it. But, but, let your conscience convince you to vote for the right person and pray to God. It's very important. Let the, let the Holy Spirit direct you. Listen, man of God. God will not pay for whatever it is that he has not ordered for. You will not pay for it. You will never pay for it. That's true. If the one that God himself chose to bring prosperity to a nation is on the seat, Heaven will release prosperity. Yes. What is wrong with Nigeria? You have oil in Nigeria. Look at the state of things in Nigeria. We talked about security. There is no security. We are in the UK. In your house, sir, do you have burglary proof in your house? I don't even shut my door. Do you I have burglary proof in your house? I said, I don't even shut my door. You don't even door. shut the door. <laughs> but every house in Nigeria, you have to have burglary proof. In Nigeria, you provide electricity for yourself. It's like a self imprisonment, yeah. Provide water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Provide security. Yeah. You have to provide even every family is a government on the you, you provide everything for yourself mm -hmm. and you have a government. What are the government doing? They owe it to you as a duty, as a responsibility to care for you. That's why you voted them in. So open your eyes. Ah, of course, I'm in Nigeria, but I'm based in the UK. I don't have a business in Nigeria. Everything I have is here. I can decide to shut, close my eyes and say, you know what, I can't be bothered. But as a prophet of God, you don't tell God where to send you, how to send you, and where. So it's my responsibility to say whatever he asks me to say. Sometimes I release some messages, people will be asking me, will you ever travel to Nigeria? I remember just two Sundays ago, one of our, uh, my son in the law, we were talking in my office, after he watched the latest prophecy I released just about a few days ago, he said, a prophet, I want to buy you a business class ticket to go to Nigeria. Now, now, now. I said, buy it, I will go. I will go. What it is. Yeah, yeah, I will go. Because mine is to release the message. As long as your conscience is clear. Many will not like it. Mm -hmm. It is not easy for me. It's very difficult for me. It is very, very difficult for me. People send the messages, abuse you, and all the rest. But it's okay because that is what God has sent me to do. And I pray that God will speak to the conscience of 
Nigerians, not those in leaders, in, 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 not, not, not those in leadership position, but those of you that want to vote, that God will speak into your mind. The Holy Spirit will guide you, whichever God that you believe in, will guide you to vote for the right person. Let us put sentiment aside. Tribalism, put it aside. Nepotism, put it aside. Cultural background, put that aside. And let the will of God be done in Nigeria. Listen to this. A couple of years ago, I started releasing messages that God said that the person that he wants to use to fulfill his mandate in Nigeria and for Nigeria is not among those old people. It's on YouTube. I've said it several times. The question is this. Why is it that it is this present time that all those youths springing up? Springing up, up yeah. And this, this message has been from 2012, 13, 15. Why is that this is the time that they all are coming up? Because this is the time. And if Nigeria should miss it this time around, may God help Nigeria. I really appreciate you. Uh, please let me tell you, viewers, before we came uh, on here, the pastor advised me, Stanley, please, I don't want to engage in politics because I'm not a politician. <laughs> but at times, when the Spirit of God takes control, we, uh, we can't help it. And I told him, I said, well, even though we are coming to reveal what God has been talking to you about Nigeria, about Nigerians, but can we ever discuss this without um, actually touching on politics? And I'm happy that whatever, I mean, what I said earlier on has not come to be. So my apology, because I don't want to draw you into this better way. We just have to allow the interview to flow. Nigerians, I think enough of the wise. Our pastor has actually deviated from his spiritual role to advise us physically. As the election is approaching, vote with your conscience. Let your heart rule your head. Look back. Take your stock. What has been your gains since 1999 up to date? Yes. Put that assessment in perspective and Try to meditate over it and come to the conclusion. Who, who do you think is right for us as our leader in Nigeria come February 16 this year? It's a strong message, to, you know. The issue of rice being distributed, the issue of Gary being distributed, let me tell you, is that what your life is worth of? Mm. Our pastor said it, not me. I'm not, being, I'm not trying to campaign, but the point is, he has told you, let your Act through your head. Vote conscientiously. Know that the right person for the right job is who can push you forward in Nigeria. Make sure your, your life is safe. Don't spill your blood for the politicians. They will use you to attain power. Thereafter, they will dump you. But when you consider an individual as the right person that will push Nigeria forward, providing good roads, hospital, and a lot of things, then it is then we can say that actually, actually we have voted consensuously. And you know what has been happening for some time now? Vote by indirectly. Politicians sending texts to people, collecting their PVCs. Don't be ruled by those who are going to destroy you indirectly. Be ruled with your conscience. And don't allow your blood to be spilled for any Nigerian politicians. Because that is where the message of today is. We are going to speak about security very soon. But I'm still going to draw our pastor yes. to the issue of how do we attain a peaceful election come this Saturday? I know it is essential, as we said earlier on, we have to be prayerful, we have to allow God to direct us so that at least we can be led right to the polling booths. Okay. Now, what is the advice you have for the typical voter on Saturday? Majority of the people that are already in the seat of power in Nigeria, majority of those who are not yet in the seat of power in Nigeria, but vying for the seat of power in Nigeria, their sons and daughters, including them, they have doership citizen. Either UK, the US, or Canada. Canada. If they push you to instigate violence in Nigeria and there is an outbreak of violence in Nigeria, 
If they are not able to control you, control the rudder, they take their passport out of the country. You suffer it. If they kill you in the process, they will not come to help you train your son or your daughter. But their sons and daughters will have very good education, be or having a, a, a high position, they might end up employing your son as a good man and employ your daughter as a housemaid. Why? Because you had the opportunity to build a better Nigeria that will be conducive for your son, your daughter, and the son and the daughter of those you are voting for. You had the opportunity, but you, because of what you will eat now, you destroy the future of your sons and your daughter. Let me tell you this. It doesn't matter any amount of money. And the truth of the matter is this. How many of you, right, for, like you said, since 1999, how many of you voters that you can say that the money that I collected from a politician, I use it to build a house? The money you have collected from them, did you use to buy a car? Was it enough for you to train your son and your daughter in school? No. Absolutely no. So this is an opportunity for you. Your life is important. Your life is precious. Your life is special. There is greatness in you. Do not use stipends from a politician to destroy the greatness that God has in you. Don't make your son to be fatherless before time. Do not make your wife to be a widow before time because of the little money that they are going to give to you. Do not do that. Don't do that. Save Nigeria. All those old people you see, they are all thieves. Mm -hmm. They are all thieves. Thieves want to come back. To do what? To do what? Listen to this. A politician that spent money to get there, when he gets there, you think he will not force to look for a way to make his money back? It's an investment. So he has it's to... an investment. <laughs> and most of those big political parties in Nigeria, they are deep into evil activities. They are deep rooted in evil activities. That is the truth. You can make the difference. Your vote counts. Your vote counts. And Nigeria is depending on you. Nigeria in 20 years' time is depending on your vote now. However you make your bed, so you lie on it. If you sell your vote, they come in again, loot the treasury, nothing. How much is 18,000 naira minimum wage? Where each time I go to Nigeria, I spend maybe 10, 10, 12 days, I spend more than 20,000 naira to buy a recharge card. Because I need to make us. Talk about transportation. 18,000 to do, to do what? Very insulting. When a, 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 a plate of food in some hotel is 5,000 naira, you eat just one, one plate of food, 5,000 naira. Somebody is earning 18,000 naira. Sad. And Nigeria is a blessed country. <laughs> UK, do you have oil? You don't have oil. Yeah. But Nigeria has got oil. What has happened to all the oil money? We are they? <laughs> a thief will boldly come and say, yes, I stole the money, but this is me again. I'm coming back again. And people be clapping and voting. Where's your conscience? Where's your, where's your conscience? Most of you are educated. You are educated. Let's stop this, this madness, my dear. Stop this madness. Face reality for once. And we all we uh, so when we go to Nigeria, Nigeria will be a peaceful place for us to go. Some people have brought want to go back home because of insecurity. Because of insecurity. Now. You brought me to policies, I'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to electricity in Nigeria? Power in Nigeria, what happened? Do we want to say that Nigeria does not have the money to fix our electricity? All the billions they have been voting out for power, what has happened to the billions? Where is the electricity? Listen, there's no nation that can grow economically without a stable power. No nation. No nation. No nation that can grow economically without is it doesn't matter what you put in place if the power is not fixed security is not there nothing will happen so they should get it right they should want you, you know how much you spend to buy generator you know how much you spend to fire your generator at night many have died 
as a result of uh, the fuel from generator. Yet, you still want to vote for people who will come there and eat your money and take your money away. You, the recycling leaders. When they can't get their way here, they jump to the other, other party. They will be welcome and be celebrated. We are not fools. I'm not fool. I'm not a fool. I didn't want to talk about politics. My intention was to come here, just deliver the message, and then that's what, what he brought me to eat. <laughs> but since we are alive, I just have to also contribute as well. Well, at least you are a Nigerian. Uh, yes. And whatever happens back home concerns you as well. In a way. So, it, as, I mean, as, before the program started, at least I was trying to explain to you that way. Well, there's no way we can touch on anything about Nigeria that we won't talk politics. Because it's true. Now, you've brought me back to the issue of the way we practice politics in Nigeria. If I cast, if I, I mean, I, I, I think you must be well aware in 1979 that prior to the election of UPNP in 1979, on every lips in Nigeria, especially within the Southwest, were the four cardinal programs that the UPN wanted to actually execute when they come to power, which actually uh, narrated us uh, cheap housing free education, infrastructural development, and uh, free medical services. You remember? And this was what actually powered UPN into political prominence during the period of time. And that is politics of issues. Now, since the campaign commenced, has there been any political party that you have pinpointed as having touched on the pains of Nigerians. <laughs> Please. The pains that Nigeria has been going through for a very long time, and yet, no resolution, no solution, no palliation, nothing. So, why are we a nation? To be honest with you, I have not followed vividly, in details, the activities of any of these politicians. What you have witnessed are just points of confrontation, hatred, blackmail. The reason for that is because, like I said earlier on, I do not want to bring sentiment into it. I just neutralize my mind. I don't want to, whatever they are doing, whatever they are doing. I understand. Of course, sometimes I, I listen, I hear news, I see them, but say I follow one particular one, I don't. Um, because this is not my uh, platform, I was invited to come and talk, so oh, yeah. uh, I have also have to uh, limit what I, if it was like, that I release, to. I have to uh, stick to uh, by the rule. If it's on my own platform, I can blow any trumpet I want to blow. Yeah. Now, I won't mention them, but it's on YouTube anyway. If you go on YouTube, it's there. We have, we have watched it already. The person that, I don't even like the way he talk to me. The way he talk has, no, 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 not this one. But the last said to me that there's a person that I want to use to bring into my plan for Nigeria, my agenda. Who am I? Who am I? And he has earned me so many enemies. Because one of the people who are vying for the position of uh, the president in Nigeria at the moment is a very good friend of mine. One of the people who are contesting is a friend of mine who I would say that even look up to me as a father. Spiritual father. Spiritual father. Have high respect, regard, and honor for me. To the little. You think it's easy for me to come out and say that this is the person that God spoke to me about? It's not easy for me. But I just have to bite my teeth and say exactly what the Lord said, I should say. I will mention, if you want to go on Google and then you Google it there, because this is not my platform, so I'm just borrowing platform here, so I have to follow the rules, play by the rules here. <laughs> I understand. You understand? <laughs> so, um, once again, the borrow is in the court of, voters. of the voters, not in the hand of God. Listen, I've helped people and including me, I just say it in the past that my destiny is in the hand of God. I believe that you too, you have said so at a point, that your destiny yes. is in the hands of God. Yes. Until when the Lord spoke to me some times ago and said to me, to some people, their destiny is in my hand. To some nation, 
yeah, the destiny is in my hand. But to many, majority, their destiny is not in the hand of God it's anymore. My destiny is no more in the hand of God. Listen, at the moment God said to Moses, I'm sending you to Egypt to deliver my people. His destiny have left the hand of God is not in his hand. At the moment God spoke to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1 from verse 5, before I phone you, I know you, I'll do your prophet, his destiny have left the hand of God. Whatever he chose to do with it, it's left for him. Now, let me take you back to the book of Judges. Before Samson was born, before he was conceived, the angel of the Lord appeared to his mother and gave the mother a detailed information about the birth of Samson, how he should be raised, and what God will use him for. The angel appeared to his mother alone. The father was not there. When the father came, the mother shared her encounter with the angel with the father. Now, the father and the mother now prayed that the angel should come again. The angel visited the two of them and gave them the same lowdown of his birth how he will be raised and everything. And I believe vividly that, I believe surely that they related it to Samson. Because when he was growing up, so that his hair was not being cut, he might ask questions, they would tell him the reason why. His destiny led the hand of God unto his parents, mm. and then they now handed it over to him. This is what God called to do. What happened to him at the end? He didn't fulfill his destiny. Mm. Because he left his hand and in his hand, he left the hand of God and in his hand. So most of you watching me now, your destiny is no more in the hand of God. God told you that you're going to be great in life. You didn't go to school. You didn't learn any trade. You have no job. You wake up, sleep, eat, wake up, sleep, and you are waiting for greatness. No, my dear, at the moment God told you that you are born to be great, He has given you your destiny. You walk in the path that will lead you to your greatness. Let me remind you this. On the streets of Nigeria today, yes. we have talents, yes. professionals, yes. people who, if they have the opportunity of getting out of that country, yes. the star will shine beyond expectations. Yes. Is it true they are making that they've not been able to make a stride in life when we have a government upon government that has never given inspiration or sort of a, conducive environment for people to, to grow to, I mean, to, to, the, to the fullest of, of their talents and their endowments? Is it their fault? It took him into a very another deep well now. We have to because you yeah, are bringing let, it. I, want, I, will, no, I will stir the water. You, you are no, bringing it I need to beat, still up the water. If you, are, if you try to empower the youth and tell them yeah. that, well, you can't be stagnated because of your lack of vision. I, I, vision I, I need definitely, to. we have to be fair to them. Are they be inspired enough, especially? Let me tell you, the, the strength of China today and India is their population. The Western world sees this as a very good uh, opportunity for cheap labor, bringing all their things there so that they can pay cheaper. So Nigeria should be among the league of great nations with 200 million people. Why is Nigeria being so stagnated? Is there a, an international conspiracy? Why is it that our youths are being destroyed systematically? Why is it that Nigeria has got no light at the end of a tunnel and frustration is on the street and yet they are being referred to as being lazy and you are today trying to encourage them that they should try to find a vision. Where is the vision? Okay. No electricity? Yeah. No encouragement? Yeah. The money being looted yes. by several governments? Uh, nothing to fire them into to their best of uh, assets and best of talents. Do we blame them? Uh, in that situation, you cannot 100% blame the youth or those people that have sort of talents. One minute. Please, viewers. These are the real issues that I want to ponder over tonight. Election is coming up on Saturday. What have you gained from all our successive governments? Have you agitated about the benefits you have gained as a very good talent working on the streets? Are you going to sell conscience again to the politicians 
who are going to use you and dump you, please, sa as Saturday is coming, vote conscientiously. Think about your future. Many youths today, they are not married, they, they, they can't get married. No abode for them to live in. Every day they live in frustration. No money to eat. Now, are you going to make yourself a product of a, a political us right? Please, I want you to, to, to take a cue from our pastor with the way he had advised us tonight. Putting that blame on you that you have to trigger your own destiny. That your destiny resides now on you because God has created you to be great. But that greatness, are you working towards it by making sure that you vote the right person that will actually trigger your life, that will power your life to a better future? Please, Saturday is very important. When we get to try this Saturday, I can assure you within the next five years or within the next four years, Nigeria is going to be in a, uh, on a level that has never been imaginable in the history of that nation. But that destiny is coming this Saturday. The program is Way Forward Nigeria. From now till next Saturday, decisions are to be made as to whom you are going to vote for. But the most important thing is your blood is very precious to you, to your family, and to the nation at large. Make sure that on Saturday, you go there, cast your vote, and go back home. Whatever comes out of the result, please, when you fight to live, you fight another day. Don't make yourself a sacrificial lamb for any politician. My name is Fatayo Gurubido. The program is Way Forward Nigeria, and I've been engaging with Pastor Austin Moses of Manasseh House, London. Pastor, now we are going to touch on security. But before we go into that, there are clips that I want the viewers to watch. Because there are times when you engage on people and the, there are certain realities that is coming through judicial media and you try to engage people on these uh, realities. It's like they don't see anything. They are not actually thinking about it. Yeah. But the international world, world are warning us of some dangers, which actually has been part of our program tonight, okay. warning people that they should not engage in violence, that they should try as much as possible to vote sensibly and quietly and go back home. But when the words of elders are coming from behind, is there the approach 2019 election? My name is Again, the purpose of this event is to try to make sure that the Congress of the United States, uh, the administration of this country, our friends and allies around the world, and not least, of course, people of goodwill in this country and elsewhere, are on notice that Nigeria is at risk of disastrous collapse. That the forces that we've just been talking about are in the process of taking down a country that is the most populous in Africa with horrific implications, not just for the immediate vicinity, the Lake Chad region as it's known, but for that continent and almost certainly others beyond. Uh, Congressman Wolf mentioned Bono, talking about a catastrophe that would make what has happened to Europe in the past few years as a relatively small number of people migrated there with unbelievably chaotic consequences look like a day at the beach by comparison. We're on notice. And the question is, do we have to wait until this horror is upon us before something is done about it? Or do we take steps now to try to prevent that? And I don't think any of us is saying that this is a panacea. But the appointment of the appropriate individual with the requisite authority, and I just wanted to underscore what Congressman Wolf said about having the President of the United States essentially personally empowering Senator Danforth to lead the effort 
on behalf of our country to alleviate that situation. That has to be done again, and it has to be an empowering of a person with the stature and the capabilities needed to do two really vital things. One is to pull together the government agencies that have responsibility for pieces of a problem like Nigeria. The Defense Department, as well as, of course, the State Department, USAID, the UN mission of the United States, the National Security Council, and others, to come together with a common, appropriate, and much needed policy approach. And then secondly, at least as importantly, to be able authoritatively to represent what that approach is to the government of Nigeria. So they know who they're dealing with. They know that this is, in fact, the policy, and they can't go you know, looking for people who will provide some sort of uh, alternative that might not require as much of them. So it's those two vitally important things that have to be done. And on behalf of, uh, again, the Save the Persecuted Christians coalition and team, I just want to say I think this is a moment of truth, a moment when we will find a difference being made by an administration that is about making a difference on behalf of religious freedom and those who are being denied it around the world. And let me just take a moment to say, as bad as this situation is, it is just one of the areas in the world in which particularly Christians are suffering. By some estimates, it's as small a number as 215 million. Christians being brutally persecuted. By others, it's as high as half a million. Excuse me, half a billion. This is on our watch. It is unconscionable. It must be challenged, contested, and if possible, stopped. And that's what this coalition is about. And I pray that we will be able with the help of people like Congressman Estes and Congressman Wolf and the Archbishop and our coalition and countless others to see this problem sorted by the appointment at the earliest possible moment, preferably by the end of this year, because these elections are approaching, of an individual with the requisite authority of the President of the United States and the assignment of making both the U.S. government policy coherent and clear and effective and communicating that, again, authoritatively to the uh, government of Nigeria, who in the end is ultimately responsible for preventing this catastrophe. Yeah, thank you, our viewers. Um, actually, I hope you heard the message from uh, the American congressman. I can actually readily uh, remember the name. But if these messages that come from within, from within Nigeria, a lot of people will be saying that it's, it's Photoshop. And uh, maybe the opposition went to make the video to send it. But, Pastor, we are, we are watching a voice coming from America. Do you understand the way that carries? Another point is, is this a recent video? Like somebody messaged me on my Facebook that, oh, uh, rubbish, you know, this is a uh, rubbish uh, because uh, it, it might be a past uh, message. But the point is, when you see what the man has touched, even just as Zoom, it's a message that had come in the past, it is still as relevant today because we are on Tenta Oaks. Talking in terms of fiscality, and um, as we are approaching 2019 uh, okay. presidential election on Saturday. Before so, is this a blasphemy or a reality as is coming from America as to what many of us do not know, which actually at the back end might be happening? And uh, I mean, where do you place Nigeria within the next three months? 
before I respond to this present question, yeah. you asked me a question the other time. You didn't allow me to. Okay, sir. So Go I wrote on. it down because okay, okay. I'm not a journalist, but me to have been uh, <laughs> it has been long for me when it comes to media, <laughs> camera, and all the rest. <laughs> you asked me about the youth in the country. They are talented. They are mm -hmm. on the street, mm -hmm. and then and they are wasting. And yeah. they are wasting. Yeah. Should we blame the youth or blame? Of course, you blame the government because when it doesn't matter how. Um, I, 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 um, I preached a message on YouTube some years ago, and I titled the message, A Man with Great Vision in the Midst of Visionless People. A Man with Great Vision oh my God. in the Midst of Visionless People. Wow. <laughs> the fact that someone is at the helm of affairs in a country mm. does not mean that they have vision for the people. Most of the politicians in Africa, they have vision for their own pocket. And their family. And their family, so they are visionless. Mm. So it doesn't matter how great your vision is. It does not matter how big it is. If you are in the midst of visionless people, they will destroy your vision. If you are in the midst of visionless people, they will not create an enabling environment for, for your me. vision to strive, strive, for you to be able to accomplish and fulfill yeah. your vision. Hmm. They will not. Deep. I use Joseph as an example. He had two dreams. He had a vision of people with him too. But he was in the midst of visionless brothers. Hmm. They tried to kill the vision. So you blame the government because they are not providing a enabling environment for them to be able to actualize or yeah, demonstrate just, or display their, 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 their talent. Hmm. There are many people abroad that they are not supposed to be in abroad. Yes. There are many. They're supposed to be back home. But because building the nation. Building the nation, but yeah. because the leaders refuse to create a enabling environment to strive in their various areas of talent, so they end up leaving the country. That is the Nigeria that we have today. An election is coming again today, and you want someone to come and deceive you and lie to you and take you for a fool, take you for granted, give you peanuts or they don't even give you anything and then you follow them. Don't vote by sight. By sentiment. Don't vote by sentiment. By religion. Put religion aside. Put tribalism aside. Nepotism. Family, family link. Family link. Put that aside and let the mandate of God for Nigeria prevail. When we allow when we allow the mandate of God to prevail in Nigeria, we will begin to see the manifestation of the promise of God for Nigeria. God is above everybody. God is above a nation. There is what we call the will of God and the permissive will of God. Proverbs, I think 19 verse 20 or 22 said, Many are the thoughts of a man's heart. But it is the counsel of the Lord that will stand. Some translation will say it is the will of God that will stand. In other words, a man can spend billions of naira to plan things, but it is the divine mandate and the will of God that will stand. In any leader, why do you think David was a successful? Because I'm a pastor, so I have to speak from that angle. Spiritually. Yeah. Uh, spiritually. Why do you think David was a successful king? Because he all, always inquire of the Lord. Mm. He always walk in the way and in the honors of God. He always do exactly how God wants him to do. And the first time he asked God, God told him to go to Judah. He asked God, when I get to Judah, where should I go? Because he go to Hebron. When he got to Hebron, that was when he was first made a king. So he was being led by the Holy Spirit. Those that have been led by the Spirit of God, they are called the sons of God. It is not those who are in power. You can be in power and you are not being led by God. If you are in power, you are not being led by God. You have authority, you are not being led by God. You are not the son and daughters of the Lord. I'm not preaching. Definitely, if you I'm preach, not, I'm not it's, preaching. It's really, we need it at this, at this hour because actually we, we are actually, we need encouragement, we need empowerment as a youth, as a Nigerians, because we are determining our destiny in another five days. Do you know why, do you know why, why the leaders don't want to empower the youth to be able to actualize their potential? It is because the Bible said, my people are destroyed because for lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. So they know if they empower uh, them with knowledge, they will revolt. So they better 
it's, 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 it's common in Africa. But there's one thing, I'm not trying to cut you short. There's one thing about this world. I just realized with my little experience in life that for me not to forget nobody wants nobody wants you to have your freedom. You have to fight for it. That's exactly where I'm going. Yeah, Listen yeah. to this. You can be working in a company in Nigeria, and they know that you are very good, you are talented. They will not want to pay you the amount of money that would give you liberty, your freedom. No, no. They will pay you peanuts and keep you there. Hmm. Because they want you to remain the working they for pay, them. The more you plan for yourself. You yeah. plan for yourself. So they pay you little <laughs> so they can drain your brain, mm. suck your brain. But before you know it, you are old. You have nothing to show. Despite the fact that you are talented, you have nothing to show for it. You become the story, telling your student's story. You know how I used to be there. I used to be the best worker in my place of work. What do you have to show for it? Absolutely nothing. So the leaders don't, don't want to empower the people with knowledge because they know if they know. That they know, that they know. And thank God that they are knowing now. Hmm. They are waking up now. The youth, so youth, wake up from your slumber. Your parents, some of you, sold their plot of land to train you in university. Some of you, your mother sold their cl her clothes to train you in school. How many years you are finished now? Graduated. No job for you. Nigeria is endowed with a blessing, with wealth that is enough for every Nigerian, but it, in the hand of few people, and they are coming again to deceive you, to lie to you, and you want to fall for it, don't trade your destiny for a peanut. Okay? Do not trade your destiny for a peanut. Your blood is very precious. It's special. In their eyes, your blood is nothing. If they kill you, they will hire somebody else to do it for them. They might not even come to your funeral, my dear. Your children will be the one who will be fatherless. No money to buy food. Your wife will be the one who will help us catch up. Don't create problems for them, my dear. Vote wisely. Take your destiny in your hand. Let's take Nigeria from the hands of those looters. And make Nigeria what God wants Nigeria to be. And God will help you as you do that. Yeah, the program is Way Forward Nigeria, and there is a special program today which we are relating to you as the election day is approaching on Saturday. Please, uh, the pastor has spoken enough, and uh, as they say, enough for the wise. Please go to the post on Saturday and preserve your life. Your blood is very precious to God and to yourself and to your family. Don't create a sort of black period for your mothers, for your fathers, for your grandmothers, and for you. let them be more precious to you. Know that whatever you decide on Saturday determines your own future. As the pastor has told us, you understand that a lot of things are happening in Nigeria. A government came sometimes, and within three months of being inaugurated, what we saw was every top positions in the land were distributed to their children. And this is you who fought for them to win the election. Are you going to allow the same to repeat itself as we are approaching 2019, February 16? Know that the, your blood is nothing to the politicians. Please, on Saturday, your destiny is in your hand. Think for your future. Think for the future of your children. Think for the future of your sisters and brothers. Not making them bereaved. Not making them, sending them into money. Preserve your life. And don't be a sac sacrificial lamb to politicians. Hold your own and make sure that whatever you are doing on Saturday will push on the right forward positively. The program is Way for Nigeria. My name is Patai Ogunibido. Next, we are going to security. Pastor, as I said earlier on, we saw that message. Are there things that the outside world know that we don't know as regards danger coming into Nigeria? As you, I think you listen to that video and you can see that in that present, whether it's a present video, or it's a past video, it's relevant. Yes. And let me remind the viewers, very soon the, road, the line is going to be open. As you are a security man, security expert, you are a political analyst, please, whatever view you have about our program tonight, please phone us and let us share your ideas. We will appreciate you. We will love you to actually get us engaged as our pastor has actually been long done. Uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate your time. And uh, please, let's go on about how did you view that? I mean, everything we do in this world is powered by spiritual. Yes. 
there is spiritual before we come to the flesh, yes. the, before the physical manifests. Yes. So tonight, I'm happy that I'm hooking you from spiritual <laughs> to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to the physical. I'm trying to, how do you, I'm how, able to transit. <laughs> and I love that. You are a good maneuver. Now, please, how do we see Nigeria in the next three months, four months? Frankly speaking. For me? As a prophet. For me? How are we going to see Nigeria, view Nigeria in the next three months depends in the hands of the voters, not in the hands of God. Okay. Not, no, 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 no. That's no, a nice no, one. <laughs> not in the hands of God. Our destiny in our hands. Yes, there is permissive will of God and there is the will of God. God will never force his will upon any man. Choose you this day who you will serve. I've laid before you life and death, but I'd rather you choose life. So God is not a God who is carrying a sledgehammer, looking for people to hit their head and say, you must by force follow me. Someone might say, what about Jonah? How many Jonah do we have in these days? You understand? So he will only let you know the path to follow. So if you decide to be a talk for a politician, and you not create unrest in the country, do you want to say it's God that created it? No, it's you. So it is whatever that the Nigeria that we're we going to see in the next three months after the election is in the hands of the voters. It's in the hands of those who are following the politicians. It is in the hands of those that the politicians are using to create unrest, to incite and instigate unrest in the country. It is in your hand. Don't let the blood of anyone be shed because of what you started, because of what a politician makes you to do. So not in the hands of God, it's in the hands of the people in Nigeria. And whatever it is that we are watching in that video, nothing is too hard for God to, to do. Yeah. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. There's nothing at all. When you are in the will of God, Men can say whatever they want to say. It is the will of God that we stand. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Which means the will that has been written in heaven be done on earth. Let the will of God prevail in Nigeria. And for those of you who think that you are so powerful that you are holding the destiny of Nigeria in your hands, let it go. Let it go. Let it go because you are not greater than God. If God gave you chance, opportunity, time to release it, you refuse. We know what happened to Pharaoh. May your story not be like that of Pharaoh. Let me tell you this. You may say, after all, I am rich. I have money. They say that money and Sarah or what? Everything. Everything. Solomon said that. But I disagree with Solomon. Oh, yeah, definitely. I disagree. Mm -hmm. Because there are many people who have money. They are sick, but the money cannot heal them. Many, they have the money, billions stuck somewhere. They die gradually from a sickness, disease, die gradually, without a way, slowly, slowly, slowly. The money was there, but the money could not help them. Could not help them. What do you want people to talk about? Your children. After you are gone, what legacy are you using your position for? Are you using it to oppress people or using it to elevate people? Are you using your position to create pains for people, to put people in bondage, or are you using it to liberate people, to free people? Think. You know why? One thing is certain for every man on this earth. Is death. You can go to bed tonight and you don't wake up. And I know we Christian, whenever they say death, God forbid bad thing. But the reality, the truth, the bitter truth, the fundamental truth, undeniable truth is this. Whether God forbid or not, you and I is. will die. It is inevitable we must die. But how, where, when, 
You don't know. Maybe you are thinking that, oh, I will be old before I die. Listen, death is not about how old you are. It's about when your time comes. You know why? Because at the age of 80, Moses was sent by God. At the age of 33, God said, Jesus, your time is over. Mm. One was starting at 80. Mm. One finished mm. at 33. Mm. So it's about the assignment. It's about the time, the written time. When the time comes, you go. Maybe it's tonight. Maybe it's tonight. So change your mind. Make Nigeria great. Stop creating pains for the people. Stop being wicked and ruthless. Stop being selfish. Stacking money. Some of you politicians, you have houses here in the UK. Nobody lives there. You have houses in America. Nobody lives there. You locked it up. Nobody's living there. The nation is suffering. Um, the nation is suffering. Where is your conscience? Where is your conscience? Where is your conscience? And some of you, you know what you are facing in the hands of your children. Some of you, your children are di disobeying you, disgracing you, embarrassing you. You can't use blood money to train your children. I'm not cursing, I'm not swearing, but it's true. Reality of life. You cannot cause other people pain, untimely death. And you want to use the money to train your children and expect your generation to be peaceful. It will not be peaceful, my dear, because the blood of the innocent one we, the, is crying. The Bible says, the blood of Jesus speak better things than the blood of Abel. If the Bible said the blood of Jesus speak better things, it means that the blood of Abel is also speaking. Exactly. But what the blood of Jesus is speaking is more better than the blood of Abel. Abel was an innocent man. How many innocent people have you killed? A politician, ritualist, how many innocent people have you chopped off their head and used their blood? What are you looking for? And most of you, you are already rich. You have the money. Yet, you refuse to desist from evil. It is never too late. You are watching me now because God is giving you the last chance. That is why you are watching me now. He wants you to change. Let us make Nigeria a better place. And God we bless you richly. He will increase you. That sickness. Some of you, you fly in and out every one week, two weeks, one month for medical attention. Medical attention abroad. You fly. Some of you, you are sick. You, can't, you, are, you are ashamed to tell people you are sick. But you know there is sickness in you. You have money. High blood pressure is killing you. You have money. You can't sleep in the night. Some of you, the innocent blood you shed is pursuing you. In the night, you can't even close your eyes. You see spirit, you hear spirit, you hear voices. Because of the innocent blood that you have shed. Enough is enough. Stop it. And the Lord will have mercy on you. We are so blessed tonight. You've taken the interview to a different level of spiritualism, of prayer, and of that, this counseling for our politicians. Mr. Politician, you have been one tonight. <laughs> uh, it's a time for sober reflection. Yeah. That is for those who actually have a heart. A heart. Nigeria is in your hand, and uh, whatever you do tonight, as you sleep, reflecting on this program, may determine a better future for you. If your days have been numbered yes. to die, I can assure you, because of your occultism or because of your ritualism or anything, as long as a hand of God is touching tonight from this studio, yes. Heritage Television. Yes. The voice of, of a renowned pastor is touching on you, and the voice is entering your heart, and you can meditate over it overnight. I can assure you that tonight your, your sins are forgiven. Yes. And God is going to replenish your life, and that sickness, as he had decreed, will go, and then you can kickstart a new life of good vision for Nigeria, of good vision for every youth in Nigeria, of good vision for a better future for every department of Nigeria ministries, of good future for infrastructure development, of a good, good future for educational development, of good good future for even health and services in Nigeria. Today is a reflective night for you, a sober reflective night. Please go back home tonight, sleep over it, and know that Nigeria must not be brought down. Yes. Every day of our life, 
you bring Nigeria down through your actions, through nepotism, through looting, through unfairness to others, through ritualism, Injustice. please, injustices everywhere, yeah. no fair play. Tonight is a blessed night for you. We are bringing him in for analysis and for revelations that he had in the past, but the interview has taken a new dimension. I can assure you tonight, God has blessed you. We are not going yet, please. We are expecting your phone calls. Give us phone calls and let us hear from you. Security experts, political analysts, please. What do you envision for this Saturday? What is your advice for voters going to vote on Saturday? We need encouragement. We need empowerment. Nigeria must move forward. Let us be part of a new Nigeria. Let us be part of empowerment in our family. Speak to your family. Let them understand the you know, implication of sacrificing themselves for a, for a politician. Let them understand that if, when they vote right on Saturday, they are pushing Nigeria forward. Yes. Your little own contribution matters. It's true. And please engage and let your impact be felt by the spirit of Nigeria. A country God has so endowed, yes. a country that God has given, the more they are killing it, the more it's rising up. Yes. A country that God has given everything in terms of eco economic and human resources. Yes. How did we get here? Saturday can determine a new future for Nigeria. My name is Patan Yoguribido, and with me tonight is Pastor Austin Moses of Manasseh House of Prayer. He has done it, he has diagnosed, he has dilated, he has done everything tonight to make sure that this Saturday is a, is a day of new resurrection of Nigerian spirit. The number is 0208-0046100 and go for option 9. 020-800-46100. Again, 020-800-4600. Please phone us, engage with us. Don't leave us to it alone because we have a lot to contribute to our voters for this Saturday. So that at least our nation can be empowered and the spirit of nation, the spirit of nation can actually wake up again. Please don't forget to phone us 0208 004600 and choose option nine. Option nine from Canada, from Nigeria, from America. As long as you are watching us, please let us hear your voice. Give us your own advice tonight. How do you empower people back home to vote right on Saturday? Is it worth it, 10,000 Naira being given through the back end so that they can vote for them? The politicians are hell-bent on buying their conscience. They are hell-bent on making sure that the flag of Nigeria, as it has been lying low for a very long time, has been lying low. The flag, once again, must be risen up and must fly for the entire world to give us our recognition, the right place in the World Committee of Nations. We need all, all empowerment from now on to Saturday to make our people to push them into their reality about Nigeria. Not about being humiliated and now being forced in blackmail tactics to go and be voting for parties that will not serve their, their purposes. We have had enough of it. Nigeria has gone through enough pains, enough tears, enough agony. Since independence, there has been no restful period for Nigeria. There has been so much of military rule. Now the politicians came now. The constitution is not serving the, the entire people. Uh, issues and the uh, situations and the every program about our political, uh, something has been wired to the, to the central so that whatever the Hams wants to do, the central can control it. All these things must change. We are Nigerians. And the, from the perspective of those in diasporans, let me tell you the reality about diasporans. More than 80% of those abroad don't like it. But the situation is making them to at least have their faith and stay abroad. It is not that abroad is better than home. Home is always home. Speak to every Nigerian, if you have a family, are you happy to be in London? Are you happy to be in Canada? Are you happy to be in America? They will tell you no. Circumstances are bringing all this. So you can understand that we have a stake in Nigeria as diasporans. And we encourage you tonight, please, do your bit. Make sure that whatever you have to do, this Saturday must trigger a new Nigeria. Vote wisely, vote sensibly, vote with your heart controlling your brain. 
And don't say because you are being given 5,000 naira or your voters card, those that their voters card have been bought with 10,000 naira. And they are releasing the numbers of their voters card so that behind, people can be using that voters card number to put in bad lot into the boxes. Let me tell you already, your future is mortgaged. This is the reality. Please, think twice tonight. It's a very night that we have been so blessed spiritually with the presence of our, of our pastor as well as empowered politically. By way of our counseling that, let us go to the post on Saturday with our conscience, with our true senses, and go and vote for those we know can impact on our nation, economically, spiritually, politically. Not those who have been recycled and who are trying to find a way to press down those that are coming behind because they are there today and they want their children to continue for the future. The same way they are born is the same way you are born. The same way God created them in his own image is the same way God created you in their own image. Why do you to be so subservient? Why do you want to be a slave in a nation where you are created to be a king? These are issues you have to ponder over tonight. Go back to sleep as a politician. What legacy are you going to leave when you die? The punishment, as God always said, that iniquity of father may be born, may, may be born right from one generation to the fourth. Are you putting down a thorn that will pain your, the future of your children? Or are you trying to put down a sort of legacy that people are going to remember you and put your name in gold? Remember, I wonder what did his own, his name is plated in gold. Azikwe did his own, his name pleaded in gold. The Father did his own. Today, we refer to them as our fathers. Are you going to be referred to as a father in future? Are you thriving on blood sucking? Are you thriving on nepotism? Your conscience speaks for you. And let me tell you, whatever you do today, God is there watching. And you can never, ever, ever go without being punished. Definitely, somebody has the checks and balances. And at the end of the day, you are going to receive your right judgment at the right time. Pastor, thank you very much for this day. Honestly, I don't want you to go. And we see, because people are still going to be calling, and we, 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 we have to just push, yeah. push on. Now, next week is going to be... Uh, this out there is going to be the pres presidential election. What are the issues that you want people to go and think over now before they go to the ballot on Saturday? Has there been, is there any advice you are going to give to them as, uh, as to, as if there are any politicians that actually, as I touch their heart, they should consider the programs or, you know, or what are the things that as they put on table that will empower them to go and vote for them? Let me ask Will you this. give them that consideration so let, that before? Let me ask you this. Out of 100% of the previous politicians that we've had as mm. leaders in Nigeria, how many of them actually, sincerely, honestly, consciously carry out what they presented before the people before they were voted in? I can't remember. So if there's not, so. The advice you want me to give them on that one is nullified. Now, <laughs> it's nullified. So, are you saying that yeah. there is no hope for this Saturday? No, no, no. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I, I ask you a question. You are being realistic you anyway. I ask you a question. You, 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 you didn't answer it. So, that is, that is nullified. Now, <laughs> having said that, that does not mean that I don't have an answer for them or advice for them. Okay, sir. It's not about what someone is presenting. It's about what is behind what the person is presenting. We've seen it years, years after years. They come to lie, bring their manifesto, we'll do this, do that. At the end, nothing has been done. Hmm. The only way is this. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. That is the answer. Let the Holy Spirit speak because, to you. Because a man can lie to you, but the Holy Spirit will never, never lie, lie to you. Yeah. Yeah. A man can deceive you. But the Holy Spirit will open the heart of a man who is deceiving you. This is what he's planning, so you will know. That is the only way. It's not about what you present. They can present A, and they, at the end, once they get there, they kick you out, they do whatever they want to do. You shout, shout. They, you, they send police out to start killing you. And I'm so glad that my country is such a blessed country. If you are not a Christian, you are a Muslim. You are a Muslim. Muslim. And we practice so deeply. Yes. And uh, when we are talking about spiritualism on the planet, yes. 
There is no reason Nigeria should be going through what is good because we are closer to God. That's why I said, let most of the leaders start to tell the people the truth. One of them again is this. Many leaders are giving people false hope. Many religious leaders giving people false hope. They are not teaching them that the way up is a gradual process. I am, um, by the grace of God, I also empower people, you know, raise people. Oh, no, I can't, I yeah, mean, I, 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 I shared a message sometimes ago. I said, I was speaking to young pastors in the ministry. I said, make sure you do not scheme your way up, but rather walk your way up. That's the difference between scheming your way up and walking your way up. If you walk your way up, your walk will sustain you when you're up there. Hmm. If you scheme your way up, your scheme will bring you down. You what? Will bring you down. So, walk your way up. Don't let any man or woman of God deceive you. Give you false hope. When you know within yourself that you are empty, I, on my Facebook page, there's something I call the University of Reality. I write University of Reality, and that one I call it Prophetic School of Ministry. Mm -hmm. You understand? I put it that way. Now, Epawani pages. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to this. This is for me. When preparation meets with appointment, there will be manifestation. Mm -hmm. Let me take it again. When preparation meets with appointment, mm -hmm. there will be Manifestation. Many people, God have opened doors for them to walk through. Mega doors. But because they were not prepared, they had nothing to put on the table. That door became a useless door. Became a useless door. I used the Ten Virgin as an example. They set out for a purpose. They went out for a purpose, for a mission. Detailed, accurate mission. Five were prepared. Five were prepared. When the appointed time came, those that were prepared, they saw the manifestation of it. Those that were not prepared, they didn't see it. Mm. So prepare yourself, my dear. Listen to this. I always say this, that some people are complaining that nobody like me, nobody this, nobody that. Nobody this, nobody that. But I always say this, that if you have what the world needs, the world will do for you. If you have what the world needs, the world will certainly look for you. So develop yourself. Build up yourself. Make yourself relevant. Make yourself relevant in the midst of every challenge. Listen to this. I don't know if I should even go into this. Please. It will encourage someone. Listen. My old father kicks me out of the house in Nigeria, in Abel Kuta Ogun State, onto the street when I was 20 years old. No social welfare, no benefit, nothing. When I was 20 years old. You know why? Because I wasn't doing well in school. I wasn't doing well in school at all. He kicked me out of the house. At the point, I became a shoe shiner on the street. At the point, I became a laborer in construction sites. At the point, I became a bus conductor. At the point, I became a beggar, practically begging on the streets to buy food to eat in Nigeria. And by the grace of God, June this year, I will be 52. I might look young, I will be 52 years. So 52 out of 10, 20, 32 years now. But by the grace of God, I published two books. And I also have a company here in the UK that I publish books for people. And I've been to 28 countries preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But when I was 20 years old, I was kicked out of the house. I didn't allow that to take me out away from the purpose and the mandate of God for my life, for the vision. I focus on the vision. When you build up yourself, nations will look for you. Your country might not recognize you, you might not be relevant in, in the eyes of your own brothers. But when you build up yourself, 
Because God knows that you are ready for nations, He will open your doors for you. And some of the pastors who are praying to God for international doors. How prepared are you? It, listen. God, I thank you. Listen to this. I always say this. Anointing is different from wisdom. Definitely. A man can be highly anointed. Yes, he's a fool. So anointing is different from wisdom. So don't rely only on that anointing to strive in ministry. The Bible says, in all that you get, get what understanding. It's very important. It's very important. Samson was anointed. He was anointed, but he was stupid. He was foolish. Because the first time he, he lied to Delilah, Delilah told him what she wanted to do. Rather, first time, second time. And you still went ahead and released the secret. Hmm. You were anointed, but you were stupid and foolish. So don't rely only on the anointing. Youth of Nigeria, build yourself. You have built yourself to a level. No one is looking at you. I know that. The day is coming. Nigeria will not continue like this. Okay? Nigeria will not continue like this forever. The day is coming when things will begin to work well in Nigeria. And by then, it is only those who are prepared, who are prepared, who have studied hard, who have built up themselves, that can step into those positions. So build up yourself. Stop being, being a thug. Thug greed does not pay. Being in court, is, courtism does not pay. It doesn't take you anywhere. Develop yourself. Build up yourself. Make yourself relevant in your generation. If I die today, which I'm not going to die. Amen. Because, no, God told me how many years I will live. He told me. I know the years I will live. He told me I know that for sure. Until that time, nothing can take me. If I die, when I die, there are people around the world who will say, we thank God that that was a time that God brought us before Prophet Moses. Have that mentality. Your wealth is not what you gather. Your wealth does not consist of what you gather. Your wealth consists of how many people you are able to affect their life positively with your wealth. That is wealth. Not the one that you carry out of the country to go and hide somewhere and say you have money. You are poor. You are poor. If you are a Nigerian, a politician, you stole money, stuck abroad, starvation in your country, you say you are rich, you are the poorest, my dear. You are poor. You should be ashamed of yourself. All those money you looted, they are, bring them back. Why didn't you invest the money in the country? Build good hospitals. No. When you are sick, you fly abroad. If those people you are flying to their country for medical treatment, if the way you, you are doing in Nigeria, that's the way they did in their country, can you go there? No. People build it. They use their resources to build their country. That is why it has become a place where you go on for holiday. Nigeria have resources that people can fly in for holiday. But what are we doing with it? Nothing. We are taking the treasure in Nigeria. No, not me, not, not we, you people. Taking the treasure in Nigeria, taking it out. Using it to build that post country, it is time to bring the money back home. We know you stole them. We know. Of course we know. Bring them back home. Bring them back home. Bring them back home. And let the money be utilized to educate the people. Nigeria is supposed to be a country of free education. In this country, if your child wants to go to invest to have the money, student finance is there. Yes. It's there. Nigeria has got the money. But it's just in the hands of few people. In the past, you hear this, they say they, they stole uh, thousands, right? Later, it's millions. Now, it's, now it's, it's billions, billions in now. dollars. In dollars it's now. Trillions in dollars. In now. dollars. And they still work freely. They still work freely. No shame. Nothing. Nothing. And you still want to come back to rule. Over who? Goats, right? You are not goats. Nigerians, you are not goats. You are wise. So, if they bring money, I won't tell you not to take it. You might need it. Take it, but vote for the person you know that will change your life and change the life of your generation. Not a cup of rice. A bag of rice. How much is a bag of rice? You eat, you eat it, you waste it. One month after, after that, you are hungry again. <laughs> Some of them, when they are campaigning, you have their direct number when they are campaigning. When you are killing for them, you have their direct number. You can go to their house unannounced, they will open the door. But you elect them there. That number 
you have to, you can't even reach them anymore. Exactly. They'll change the number, they give it to somebody else. <laughs> Who doesn't speak it? Oh, I'm sorry, it's not available. You can't reach them anymore. You can't even near their gate anymore. That's true. Because you empower them to be there. Don't empower thieves. Don't give them no more power to steal your money, to steal your future. No, say no to it. Open your eyes. Love the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Truth. Speak to you, lead you, guide you to who you should vote for. That your life will have a meaning. It is well with you. I, I will preach, of course, I'll be pastors. What do you expect? <laughs> Tonight we are so blessed, and uh, thank you, Pastor. We really appreciate it. And uh, uh, we are still expecting calls. The number, as um, earlier shown, 028 0046 100 option 9. Please phone us and let us know what your views are tonight. We are so blessed with uh, Pastor Ostimosis tonight and he has prayed for us and um, this, this has gone from uh, ordinary to spiritual and we can see that uh, with the prayers tonight, Nigeria is going to be a true country come this Saturday. And to the youth of Nigeria, the pastor has advised you that wake up from, from, from your slumber. Know that God has designed a better future for you. Know that God is going, now going to take you from shame to fame. Know that God is now ready to make that torment to be something of more glory for you. But this Saturday determines whether you are going to take a new stride to the future or not. Don't sell your conscience. Make sure that you vote for whom your conscience has dictated to you. Not somebody who has given you 10,000 naira or 5,000 naira behind buying your voting cards number. And let me tell you what happened in that. They are trying to, improv to impoverish you. They've made you to suffer in the past, mm. made you to be hungry in the past, mm. so that today they can now use the same hunger they incurred on you to do you. This is the reality of it. This Saturday, Nigeria must take a different leap to a better future. And you are going to determine that through your voting rights. On Saturday, please go to the polls. Make sure your blood is precious in the presence of yourself, your family, and of God. Don't stay where you are going to be killed or made hurt or wounded simply because you are voting for a particular candidate. Let me tell you, when you f fight to die, nobody recognizes you. But you fight today, you live, then you can fight on that day. Everything is in your hands. Your death is in your hands. You'll be blessed tonight with a pastor praying, empowering, trying to make sure, I mean, trying to open your eyes into the reality about the future. Please don't take this program for granted. Go back to your bed tonight. Ruminate over it, meditate over it, and plan for, the, for, for Saturday. Don't do things by the flesh. Let the Spirit of God direct you on Saturday so that you can vote for the right, for the right candidate as you approach this Sunday. You might be th thinking that oh, somebody that has been famous and has, has, been ruled, has been ruling before, whether in terms of deputy or in terms of uh, being there, is the right person for you. But if you sleep tonight and God opens your spiritual eye and shows you a candidate that think might empower you for your future, please go spiritual. Don't act by the flesh. Do the, wish, the will of God. The direction has given to you. Follow it. And let the will of God be done in your life as well after this Saturday. My name is Patel Yukuribido. The program is Way Forward Nigeria. And we are trying to open your eyes to what happens on Saturday that you should try as much as, as, as possible to avoid violence as we have with us, our uh, pastor, Austin Moses. We really appreciate you. And uh, tonight is a special day here. And uh, we really see the empowerment you are giving to everybody and to the studio. Even the open, and the heaven is opening. And we can see that uh, whatever you are saying tonight is divine, not okay. just uh, from the flesh. No. And we are, so, we, are, we are so blessed. Now, we have to actually move forward again as regards the security. I don't want to bring you into politics. But there is this thing that I've had that if people phone, I think we can deliberate over it, which has to do with the issue of international people coming to Nigeria to partake in politics. Actually, I, I don't want to touch on 
any political party tonight, I don't want to criticize anybody uh, because I have by my conscience and uh, I am completely depoliticized or uh, tribalized. I mean, I'm a Nigerian, I love Nigeria. Nigeria, I wish we understand the stake that Nigeria takes in the world. I wish people understand the respect we command across the world as people. Except that many politicians are bringing us disgrace and shame. When you say you're a Nigerian, the impact it you know, has on people, I wish people understand it. So, but, well, recently we had uh, one of our political gladiators in Nigeria trying to insinuate that uh, if foreigners come to Nigeria to partake in an uh, election or engage or influence the election, that uh, they might be going back in body bags and that. I know it's an explosive expression that uh, Nigerians are responding, actually. But when you look back to the history of the ruling party, before even the election took place in 2015, we saw that the president was actually here. And uh, he was an, um, um, he was actually uh, engaging people here. We went to the parliament to, to speak and uh, so many other things. If immediately after the election he came here, perhaps maybe to thank people for, you know, what the help they, they give for And you can remember, he flew, he flew to Nigeria just a day before the inauguration. And then uh, we understood, I mean, a lot of, Involvement, how they travel, doubt, influence, and maybe foreign influences, other, other things. But now, why is it that this hypocr hypocrisy is being played out? Is it a sign of fear, or are they being realistic as people in power? Because I'm trying to avoid mentioning them, but at least those who understand what has been trending in terms of news will understand what I'm talking about. Is it advisable at this moment to be? spewing such utterances that, uh, you know, is it not highly inflammable? Or how do you assess it? Like you and I and most of our viewers at home are already aware that um, politics in Nigeria is a do or die affair. So, um, how many minutes? most politicians, uh, they don't see in Nigeria, they don't see no. uh, the position as um, uh, an office to serve, but they see it as an office to embezzle money to enrich themselves and mm -hmm. their family mm -hmm. and their friends. So, as a result, they will, or they, of course, not mind, they will say whatever they want to say. Mm -hmm. But the thing there is that the person that, I, because I don't, I'm just hearing this one, I don't follow those things. I don't, I don't I understand. Know, but I'm trying so, to whoever that them. said it, is, is it the person that won't kill those people? No. It's people that will do the So everything still come down to the people they are using. You see, that's why you are appealing to them. You see, come down to the people. They can say whatever they want to say. Those people saying those things, most probably, before the election, their children will not be in Nigeria. Mm. They will have flew them out of the country because anything can happen. Mm. If anything happens, they go through the back route and then they're gone. You understand? It is the sons and the daughters of the masses. The less privileged ones, the poor ones, like you said, they make sure that they put them in a state of poverty because of such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Because they know that they will come with what they debate, with the know that you need. You are hungry. Mm -hmm. They give you stipends and give you little things just to buy your conscience, buy your food, buy your destiny, buy the generation of your children. So, everything is to come down to the politicians and those following the politicians. If they send to go and kill, will you kill? Don't kill for anybody, my dear. Don't kill for anybody. Don't let the blood of anyone be on your hands. Don't let the blood of anyone be on your hands. How do they know that foreigners normally come to vote if they were not part of it? How do you know? Like the Rubai would say, is is a thief that know how to trace a thief. On, on, so how do you know that foreigners will come to Nigeria to vote if you're not part of it? That's just it. But there are many things going on, going on wrong. There's many things, many, many things going on. Politician A doesn't trust politician B. There's no trust. They are being afraid. Even the House of Parliament, whatever it is, even to shake one another is, is fear, to hug is fear because you don't know what they put in their body. So that, 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 that is it. May God help us. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit once again the Take summary of 
what I have been advocating for since you came. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit lead you. That is the summary, the totality of it all in a nutshell. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you, and it will be well between Jesus mighty name. Oh, Pastor, we really appreciate today. Thank God. Thank you very much. It's been a very, very empowerment uh, night. And uh, I just hope that our people are listening. Yes. And uh, I can assure you, the reason why we can't have court tonight, maybe people are so great. I know, I know. Because they, they are, it's, it's a different level of empowerment. And uh, I know that uh, with that, people have actually acknowledged that uh, definitely they have to full sensibly oh, on yes. Saturday. The program is uh, with World Nigeria, and we are so glad to have our pastor tonight, uh, Austin Moses of uh, Manasseh House of Prayer. Uh, please go out there from now, empower your family, empower your friends, and tell them that they have to vote wisely on Saturday, and may God direct us, and may Nigeria continue to push forward. My name is Fatai Ogoribido. Hopefully, I might be seeing you by next week again when we engage one another political talk. Today we've made it practically an empowerment night with spiritual direct, uh, advice from our pastor. That's why we didn't go into politics or, you know, it's, it's a lot of going deeper into speaking about uh, what we, uh, what the programs that politicians are having this and that. But by next by God's grace, we try to see what we can do. And during the election night, please hook on to editing television as we are going to try from our own end to release the results as it's coming from Nigeria and to ensure that whatever we have to do to maintain peace in Nigeria, we do our own best. Thank you very much for, for your view tonight. May God continue to help you and help your household. Please be part of a peaceful election. Good night. My daughter in law. So, how are you planning for my son's birthday? Mama, 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 have to cook up for her. Do you people have a grease there? No. It's okay. Okay. Let me call you back. Mama, she's okay. Hi, so wait a minute. Please pack some grease. I am going to visit my son. <laughs> My daughter in law. It's arranged. But you must use original red oil to prepare the soup. What? I'll call you back. <laughs> Mama Chijo, please include Isio Morocco. My daughter in law. Everything is now set. But don't forget that gold wristwatch I saw the last time I visited. Her. Now you can talk until you tire for just 11 cup of a second. Call all networks in Nigeria and 30 international destinations, including US, UK, China, Canada, and India, for just 11 cobra per second. Dial star 211 hash to activate. That's silk bubbles. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Heritage, heritage television. television promoting african culture and heritage at its best from talk shows that concern you to both local and international news that relates to you from grassroots football to african children's programs heritage television we cover your social and special events like weddings birthdays church anniversaries and so on and broadcast them live on our apps and online heritage television broadcasting everything about culture and heritage heritage, heritage television. television we've got, we've it, got covered. it covered do download our apps on both Android, iOS, and Windows mobile platform. Heritage, Heritage Television, Television, your very, your own, very own TV, TV station. station.